Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to VR News for Wednesday, December 28th, 2016. Let's jump right into VR News, guys. Quickly talk about copyright claims. So, had my second copyright claim ever filed against me last night, laying in bed, hear my phone, doing the usual staring at the ceiling before I hit the sack, and see the copyright claim and I'm thinking okay I did say some critical stuff during the quick look that's what it was for but I'm not going to mention the game's name until it gets resolved but it's pretty obvious the one from last night and um yeah I'm thinking you know what no I was constructive in it but maybe the dev just kind of lashed out anyways checked out in the morning nothing to do with the dev it was the musician directly that flagged it, ended up being music. Now, the first copyright claim I'd had filed against me worked out amiably because I had already received permission, but it's mostly an automated process, so it's kind of outside the control of the artist most of the time, and it just gets flagged. So, that's what happened here. I'm working with them directly. When you are flagged that way, it gets demonetized, and the person with the copyright claim can put ads and basically make revenue off of it. Now, yes, I do this mostly for fun, but being able to afford the odd beer or game, most of which I put back into the channel, definitely doesn't hurt, right? And it's very, very minute amounts, but for that reason, it's definitely welcome, which is also why I delisted it. Basically set it to private until it's worked out, uh, contacted him directly and let's see because it was royalty free and the dev did everything they were asked to do which is you know cite the source for the music stating that it was royalty free etc because look nobody's going to be bootlegging off of that one minute 12 second snippet that they flagged because I'm yapping all over it so I'm sure it'll work out fine but if you're curious where the video went that's where it went. All right, Touch Watch 2016, hopefully the last freaking Touch Watch. So I want my touch. I want it yesterday. Looks like I said before, tomorrow is the day. Yesterday it was in Redmond. I'm gonna throw up a map again. It's going, or this morning, sometime it went up the I-5 corridor. That corridor, people from Seattle and Vancouver usually go the opposite direction for going to Disneyland, for example. But nope, for me, it was going north to the city of Richmond, which is part of Metro Vancouver, tomorrow. Unless he whose name we shall not freaking mention, that rat bastard, has something to say about it, it will be put on a truck and the driver who, you know, goes to my area will deliver it to me. So fingers crossed, guys. Hopefully that's it. And I have my touch tomorrow. Now let's talk about Vertigo. Not the condition, but rather the game. So there's a game called Vertigo. It's an HTC Vive indie game from a company called Zulu Bow Productions. And clearly, based on the gameplay and art style, clearly kind of a... a love letter to Valve, if you will. It looks kind of parts Portal and parts Half-Life, albeit with an indie flair. So we're not talking commercial level, amazing, mind-blowing graphics, but really, I don't care because I'm about gameplay. Graphics come after gameplay. Either way, it looks to be very meaty based on the review. And if you're looking for something until Valve, you know, actually makes something in VR, that doesn't take 20 minutes to complete. This theoretically should tie you over, according again to the reviewer, link below. All right, the former CEO of Colopal Knee, his name is Jikin Jung, has formed his own company called Subdream Studios out of San Mateo. And their focus, according to him, is going to be social VR as well. He's raised one and a quarter million dollars and hopes to have something out by spring. Now, Subdream, and some of this I think was lost in translation on him, but hear, hear him out through me talking about it. 
he named it that because he sees VR akin to a dream state. And he says that's going to be the flavor of the social VR is when you first go in, you're in a communal lobby, that's your dream state. And then if you choose to do activities with those people there in that dream state, that's a dream within a dream. So this is all according to him. Like I said, something he hopes to have out by spring company again is called Subdream Studios and Social VR is what they're focusing on. All right. I've mentioned how I feel about patents before, how they are a necessary part of business. They don't necessarily mean they're going to amount to anything other than CYOA 101, which is what most companies do. Cover your own arse. Um just to be protected. And even then, you still may not be protected and you still could lose your copyright claim and patent claim and all that kind of stuff. However, what was filed last week was as follows. Uh, it was with the US Patent and Trademark Office. Microsoft says its idea centers on placing several projectors inside a room that would project objects that would then be deleted by the HoloLens headset in order to help extend its field of view. In theory, this could help increase the field of view from the current 40 degrees, and I think they actually made a mistake on that, to the eye's real viewpoint of nearly 180 degrees. And again, depending on who you're talking to, what subject, uh, or specifically what angle, field of view for humans is gonna vary a bit, but that's the gist of it. It's going to increase it significantly. Now. The patent itself states different instances of the complementary computer-generated content can enhance each other. The complementary computer-generated content can extend a field of view, change the appearance of the real-world scene, mask objects in the real-world scene, induce apparent motion, and or display both public and private content, among other capabilities. So, sounds very cool. Of all the patents I've talked about, this one is probably the most plausible because we know Microsoft is plunging literally feet first, head first into augmented reality. That's something that they are hell bent on nailing down. So I wouldn't be surprised if this does lead to something from Microsoft. All right, next, let's talk acquisitions and Oculus acquiring an eye tracking startup called the iTribe. Now, the iTribe developed a $99 eye tracking device with developer kits for hardware and software that can bring gaze based interfaces to smartphones and potentially to VR headsets. They've also developed foveated rendering technology that lets those VR systems save computational power. We don't need to get into that too heavily. Anybody who's watched uh, you know, some of my past videos, you'll know that a great example, if you're new to foveated rendering, basically what it is, is whatever you're looking at directly on the screen, that circle just around what you're focused in on, that has to have the high detail. The further away from that point you move, the less detail you require because no human, well, some can, that's coming up in a different story, can soak that all up at that same level of detail. So, very, very cool. The game is Robinson the Journey. That you can actually see foveated rendering at work in the game directly. So, check that out and it'll make it very clear to you. So, they've raised millions and now, of course, with this acquisition, they are in a great position to, you know what, with you know who, and that looks like uh, exactly what's going to happen because Google had recently purchased iFluence, another eye tracking company. Now, some details on the company's websites, but a lot of it is yet to be announced and subject to speculation. Hopefully as the weeks, you know, kind of bring us into 2017, we'll have some more information on that. Now, there were tons of reports today that the CES upcoming event was going to be where HTC announces the HTC Vive 2. 
That was reported many places. Google it, you'll see. There's been statements to the contrary, including an official one from HTC themselves that says there is no truth to the rumor of launching Vive 2 at CES 2017. At Vive, we are laser focused on building out a strong and growing ecosystem for current and future Vive owners so they can experience the best room scale VR with the most compelling content available. I'd say that's pretty clear, unless they're lying. I don't think they are, uh, or being intentionally misleading. I think that is still a ways down the road. All right, this next news story, guys, is pretty freaking awesome. The autism spectrum is very wide. You've got people of all kinds of ability, lack thereof, you know, you do have your Rain Man individuals, and that movie probably single-handedly did, well, it did a lot of damage to um, the whole topic and to the education of autism and Asperger's, etc. But let's just say that, yes, there are people on that spectrum who have amazing abilities. One of them, the person I'm talking about right now, Stephen Wiltshire, who has photographic memory. He's basically able to look at a scene and to crazy detail. The guy does it with cityscapes, goes up like the Chrysler building and boom, just draws for hours what he saw. He's done that now as part of a commercial with Nissan for a new Nissan Micra where he's basically seen it and then he recreates it in tilt brush. Just freaking amazing, guys. You got to check this out. Very, very cool. And it gives you a glimpse into someone with that awesome ability, how they see the world, specifically how Stephen sees it, and then is able to transfer it with a program like Tilt Brush. Just fantastic. All right. And the last news story, Twitter, quietly, under the radar, flips their own VR switch. They have made live now 360 degree streaming via Periscope. And this happened at 2 p.m. today. Twitter user Alex Petit quietly broadcast the first ever 360 degree Periscope video. So it is a basically a personal live stream smartphone application acquired by Twitter for about $100 million back in 2015. And this specific stream shows him walking along a sunny boardwalk. And there's an update that they posted that basically there's no word on what camera was used, but that a special camera is required. So it's basically to clarify, not right out of the box. You do need some other tools. All right, guys, that is it for the news. I will keep you guys abreast of everything, the touch, the copyright, and hopefully some more games and some awesome year wrap-up programs that I'll get released over the next few days. Cheers as always, guys, and definitely catch you on the VR flip side.